Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the LTC Bowling Channel or the JR Raymond Channel, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, I obviously am JR Raymond, but today we're going to talk about a couple of different things. Not only are we going to talk about, we're going to let USBC off the hook. We're not going to talk about them much today, but we are going to talk about the PBA. So the PBA is on the hook. We're going to talk about them with the wrist brace thing. Uh, I know a lot of people are still talking about the wrist brace ban, uh, which includes two-handed bowling. A lot of people are bringing that up. Urethane, the uh, the change in the rules for the urethane, as well as a new two-year rule for all bowling balls. That's going to make things interesting. And then at the end of this video, I am giving away a Bolify uh, jersey. So stay tuned for that. But we're going to talk about all these things here in a minute, so stay tuned. All right, so one of the uh, one of the rules that actually went into effect this year that was put into place a while back was the no wristband rule, no wrist brace, the ones that have the metal wrist braces. And a lot of people kind of threw a little bit of a fit about that because of, well, I have a bad wrist. You know, what, what are the old people supposed to do? You know, what about what some of these ladies? And this is exactly why I preach so much about technique. It's so much more about technique than it is about the, the actual wristbands and stuff because the wristband can give you good technique without having good technique. So we're actually punishing the bowlers who have good technique using by you, by allowing them to use the wrist brace. And now what about the people who have wrist pains, wrist problems? Well, the wrist braces are not banned. It's just the big metal ones that use metal all the way down the wrist and everything that can cup your wrist and do all the things and put you into different positions. Those ones are the ones that are banned. So you have to understand and distinguish the difference between those big robotic arms and a little wrap that goes around the wrist that keeps the tendons tight. For most people that have wrist problems and stuff like that, they have to have the wristband that keeps those tendons tight, uh, tendonitis, whatever it may be uh, in their wrists. So those are not banned. We have a comment here from somebody I kind of want to show you. It's uh, from Monkey Nuts. <laughs> I like the screen name. That's funny. If they get rid of wrist braces, then shouldn't they get rid of two-handed bowling as well? Doesn't two-handed bowling also help you keep your wrist cupped and keep you under the ball longer and create a lot more revs? Sure. You still will have to have accuracy, but if you have the two hands, surely gives you a big advantage with power, speed, and revs. Yeah. The difference, again, is it's technique. It's a technique. It's a style. It's not a, a brace. It's not something off of your body that's coming in to hold your hand or wrist in position. So I guess that's where people need to really pay attention. Um, Two-handed bowling is actually a lot more difficult than what people give it credit for, especially if you've been bowling one-handed for a long time. It's easier to learn two-handed bowling, uh, to do it properly from the beginning if you've never bowled before, than it is to learn one-handed bowling. Uh, so we do have that. Yeah, you can get a rev rate faster. You don't have to worry about clearing the thumb. Uh, no thumb pains. You don't have to worry about your span. I mean, the fit is less important than if you have a, if a full span on your hand. So there's those things to pay attention to. Um, but outside of that, two-handed bowling is actually really, really difficult to master. There's a reason why there's only a handful of bowlers on the PBA Tour that are actually successful. So you've got to be careful with saying, well, two-handed bowlers are just dominating. Oh, there's just a couple of two-handed bowlers that are actually dominating. It's more of the speed and the power with combined with accuracy that's giving these guys such a big advantage. Now, the one advantage I will share of two-handed bowling is it's a whole lot easier to manipulate ball motion because you can easily change your tilt and rotation because you don't have your thumb in the ball. That makes it easier. So you can go from zero degrees to 90 degrees in axis rotation very, very easily. And you can manipulate your axis tilt up and down by tons of degrees compared to if your thumb's in it. If your thumb's in it, you're going to have a very hard time actually getting your, your axis tilt to change. You can change your rotation a little bit easier once you get the technique and understanding what to do with your hand. It's a little bit easier. But overall, it's actually real difficult uh, one-handed compared to two-handed. Uh, so just kind of wanted to touch on that. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that and what you think about the wrist brace ban um, as well as that. Um, but we're going to move on. Let's let's share the screen now with the 
letterhead here from the PBA. We kind of talked about this a little bit. We talked about the rule, but we didn't talk about actually reading this. I was at Bull Expo at the time this actually happened. Uh, I had a little bit of discussion with Tom Clark um, at the storm party, and uh, I can't really go into a whole lot of details of what I talked to Tom Clark about. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put all that out in the air, um, but. I am going to tell you that I do believe that this was a good move for the PBA raising the uh, HD, the hardness levels of bowling balls from 73 to 78. And not because it's a move to punish anybody, you know, not to punish a purple hammer or a pitch black or anything like that, but to ensure that these balls stay within a reasonable hardness that would be legal. Because even when they raised it to 73, these balls were still, they found that some balls were still falling below the 73 and getting all the way down to 68 and 67. And it wasn't taking more than 10 shots to actually make that happen. So that's a problem. So if they raise it to 78 and sure, if it gets down to 73, at least it's above that level and it stays there. I know that still is going to raise question. People are going to be like, well, if the rule 78, why are they allowed to go below that? I do personally think that there needs to be a check on the materials Try to figure out, okay, what's so different about these urethanes today than what they had years ago? Because if you go through some of those old urethanes, they just are not the same type of, of material. Um, obviously, of course, the cores are different and everything that can help a little bit. But for the most part, it is those cover stocks. Those cover stocks are just that much different. The urethane today is completely different than the ure urethane in yesteryear. So um, with that being said, we'll kind of go through. If you haven't read this. I'm putting this on the screen for you, but uh, let's take a look at this, why softness matters. The minimum rule was put in place by the ABC back in the early 70s. The reason was implemented was certain balls had been soaked in methyl, uh, ethyl ketone, or, or MEC is what they, M-E-K, what they called it, and other softening chemicals. Soaking a ball made it softer and thereby created an obvious amount of additional hook. Uh, it was all obvious to bowlers at the time abc spent which it's kind of obvious to bowlers at this time too seeing the difference between some urethane balls and other urethane balls uh yada 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 down there they saw a hardness level above 72 the footprint had negligible minimal change but once the hardness dropped between 72 and 70 the foot, foot, footprint began to increase so that's the key as to why they made the rule 73 Right. So originally it was made to 73 because they noticed that, OK, if it, as long as it doesn't go below there, the footprint between 73 and 78 is not going to be that big of a difference. But once it gets below 73, now that footprint's really starting to change. So that's why the 78 rule is so important. Even if these balls drop to 73, it's not going to make that big of a difference. Uh, key witness here is the Buffalo. I used the Buffalo the weekend before. I still saw great motion. That, that's a hardness of 81. So I still was able to create good motion, obviously much less than the purple hammer uh, on the lanes. If you all watch some of those videos that I did, I did game one. You saw me throw the, the purple hammer on the fill and it hooked quite a bit more. Uh, I told you it was about four and two or five and three more than the Buffalo. But the Buffalo also was about two and one or three and one more than the, uh, than the pitch black. So the, it, there's some... There's some discrepancies there, but you got to be careful. Um, my buddy brought me a, uh, ooh, that smells like rain. Go put that one in there. Go on, go put it in the, that one. actually, no, don't mix them. <laughs> He's got the, the candle wax things in the thing. But anyway, hold on, buddy. Let me finish this up. Rain showers. Yeah, see, it's rain showers. Okay, hold on now. All right, so uh, the data, yep, after I'm done, I'll clean it out. We'll put a new one in. The data from the field. Yes, after this one. <laughs> Sorry. After the data, uh, the data from the field, the lab testing during the PBA 2023 season are included in Appendix B. So they show you the data. Um, it says adjustment to these types of balls have been made. Let me be clear that in all my tests, these balls all started above 73 out of the box. The data shows that all these balls get softer with use. It only takes 10 shots out of the box for the ball to drop two to three hardness points. That's crazy. So think about it. So from 73 down to 70 in just 10 shots. Like that's uh and that and again, the study showed that below 72 is when you really start to see a bigger footprint. That makes the big difference. Uh 10 shots out of the box for the ball to drop 2 to 3 hardness points. You can see in appendix B, 
uh, under the both the lab data and specifically in the dry lanes test section of the data. In addition, the continued use, they can drop to even 68, so five points. So in simple terms, if the ball starts at 73 and drops to 68, it has dropped approximately five points of hardness. There is also a lesson to learn from this scenario. Any type of bowling ball that gets softer with use could become an issue with how much it hooks, where it hooks, and how it affects the playing environment. Based on the, the based on this revelation, the PBA will also consider another rule that if a ball, any type of ball, gets more than three hardness points softer with use, it will not be allowed in PBA National Tour competition. The ball will be removed from play and researched and addressed accordingly. This will be listed as one of the options below. Um, so they went through and they listed all the options of what they could do and then told you exactly what they did do. Uh, the urethane like. So some people are asking, like, what about the microcell polymers? Um, that's this is what they thought about with that. Uh, the decision ended up being that it was to raise the minimum manufactured hardness of traditional urethane and urethane-like equipment to 78 for all tour levels effective January 6th. Uh, data from testing as shown in Appendix B highlights multiple traditional urethane balls for more than one manufacturer testing in the 68s for hardness. The drop of five points simply uh, would simply be added to the current minimum hardness of 73 to get 78 as the new minimum. The data indicates that 78 would be the appropriate number if you wanted to reasonably be reasonably sure, even after getting softer due to pro prolonged use, a ball would not go below the actual 73 hardness minimum. That is if they're not soaking them. So now comes into play how many guys are going to be out there uh, who don't have morals or ethics and they're going to soak their bowling ball to get it to be lower. I don't know of anybody that I would look at and say, oh, they probably would do that. I don't know anybody out there. Most of those guys are pretty pretty seem to be pretty good guys as far as that goes so i can't imagine that's going to be an issue um i acknowledge that we did not want to create an additional separate level of spec uh, specifications nevertheless among all the options this has been determined to make the most sense and has the most support note the date one six is being used to allow these bowling balls because of the rpi basically is what they're saying additionally no balls manufactured under the 73 hardness uh reactive balls may get significantly softer with use as well. Uh, those spot checking in the P field, PBA events, any balls, and of any style that are found below 71 will be removed and or banned. Individual balls will be removed. Entire ball lines will be tested and investigated to determine if they are softing over time with use. So moving on, lastly, starting 1-6, we'll implement that all balls to be used on the PBA National Tour must be manufactured on or after 8-1. This is the big role. This is part three that I wanted to talk about that can be a little bit confusing. So tour, so it will be implementing that all bowling balls, all reactive, urethane, plastic, everything, I think, must be used um, and manufactured after 8-1, 2022. This will ensure that all balls on the national tour will all be made at a minimum of 73 HD. This will only be on the national tour. So um, so that rule only affects the national tour, but I believe the urethane change rule affects all PBA tour, even including regional and PBA 50. So whew, that was a lot to spit out there. Let's uh that's that's crazy to me. Now that's the that's the the real rule that we want to address. Now, where the question comes in is, is that going, is it a two-year rule being implemented each year? So next year, it's going to be 8-1-2023 that the balls, I, I don't think that's the case. I think it's, uh, I think it's just like, so now any bowling ball that isn't in a current line isn't going to be able to be used. So if somebody has a gem or like what they consider a gem for themselves that they've had in their line that they love, say they have an IQ tour from 2009 that just they've had in their bag forever. Are they that old? I think they are that old, but whatever, whatever year, 2015 that they've had in their bag forever. And it's just their go-to ball. They're no longer going to be able to use that ball out on the PBA tour. So that's going to be interesting to see um, on how, that's going to play out for some people that have these balls that they're just, they're going to be upset that they don't get to use. Um, so like stuff like a phase two that was released a long time ago, are I think they're, there's, but 
I think what people need to understand is these bowling balls are still in the line. Maybe I'm interpreting this wrong. Anybody that actually knows the rule, maybe you can help me out here. But the rule, I believe, is going to be, you know, if they have these balls in their line, they're going to keep manufacturing them because there's going to be some that are manufactured after that date. So like a phase two, they're still making those. You're going to be able to find phase twos that are made after eight one, you know, obviously of 2022. I don't think that's going to be an issue, but that is the rule that's going to make it make a little bit of a like. So like with West Malat and his gold IQs, they don't make that ball anymore. He's not going to be able to use that ball out on tour. You know, that's the one example I can think of that I know of. He uses that ball a lot still. Um, outside of that, I don't, I mean, I think I pretty much agree with everything that's going on here. I think the integrity of the game is just that much more important than how people feel about their ball reaction, you know, just making it fair. And I know some people are going to say, yeah, well, you know, um, what about, uh, you know, or people are going to say, yeah, well, man, I just got lost in my train of thought there for a second. I know some people are going to be able to like, well, you're, these people, they just keep making the rules because, you know, they can't keep up with those and they can't compete. No, I mean, it's about the integrity. Like if a bowling ball is becoming illegal, you have to fix that to make sure these bowling balls don't become illegal. We're trying to keep things legal. You can't have bowling balls in there that are actually becoming illegal through time. That's the problem. And that's where the, this needed to be addressed. Uh, and it's not just picking on, even though Purple Hammers are the ones that were doing it the most, it was pitch blacks. It was probably booyahs. It was probably, I mean, those booyahs aren't able to be used anymore anyway, but all the urethane balls over time got softer from my understanding. And go look at those appendix. They got A and B. They tested all those balls. You can see uh, all of those urethanes that are made do get softer through time. So you have to, you know, go look at that, the list of bowling balls and you'll see how they were tested and what happened through the testing. So uh, big props to the PBA and Neil Stremel for, for doing these tests and coming out with these rules. Um, I personally hope the USBC follows suit because I think this is something the USBC should have done from the get go. Um, and maybe this, uh, will stop, will stop seeing so many urethane balls thrown on TV. Um, I know the big difference between 73 and 78, uh, it doesn't change the footprint all that much, but you are going to see less hook purple hammers probably are still going to outhook all the other urethanes. But I don't think you're going to see them doing the things that they did before. You're not going to see guys hooking the entire lane with a purple hammer anymore. Not at 78 hardness and not even at 75 hardness when they drop the three points. So um, because, again, like the study shows, after 72, the footprint doesn't change much. So you're not going to see, you know, the big difference where these balls are getting down to 72, 70, 68, where they're hooking the entire lane because they're causing the, the bigger footprint. So just. I know some people might not understand what that means, but um, let's just say uh, I'll try to explain it here. So let's say a ball at 73 is it's the track that it's leaving on the lane. The amount of the lane that it's actually touching is this thick. Right. And then when it gets down to 68, the track is actually this thick. So this is how much the ball is touching the lane compared to this from 73 to 70. Obviously, it's not exactly like that, but that's the example is your footprint, the amount of bowling ball reacting on the lane is this at a higher hardness level versus this at the lower hardness level. Just like uh, like tires. Think of uh, snow tires. If you let out a little air and you, you know, if you pump up your tires really, really firm and this only this much is touching on snow, they're going to be a lot more slick, right? You're not going to get as much traction. But if you let some air out and let the tire kind of sit more flat on the road and get to this where you have a, a higher uh, amount of the tire touching the road, you're going to have more traction with something thicker than you are thinner. I hope that helps just a little bit. But uh, anyway, let's move on. I want to give uh, a bowl. I want to give a bolify jersey away. So I am going to uh, let me change my screen here. I'm going to go into where I can give it away. Hold on one second. Let me share screen window. We got to go into. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to go back to that screen and I will just go to the website I need to go to. So we're going to go to 10pindoctors.com. If you haven't already become a member at 10pin Doctors, I'm going to show you a few quick things. For me, I'm going to sign up, sign in real quick. Not a robot. Oh, man, palm trees. Okay, palm tree, palm tree, palm tree. Go. All right, so I'm not a robot. Put my input in there. Okay, here we go. So I'm signed up. And once I sign in, 
I'm able to see all of these things on the website. The newest thing that we have here is the knowledge base. I want to show you this real quick. So we'll go into the knowledge base. This is an automatic updated part of the website where every bowling ball, when a new bowling ball gets released, they are automatically updated onto our website that shows you these things. It'll give you all the information, all the information on all of the newest released bowling balls. Um, and you also, as a member, will be able to get in here, click, and be able to write a review. Um, show it'll show you who owns it, all that different stuff. You know, so it'll show you here um, who owns the bowling ball of the members. Yep, maybe later, bud. Um, and then there's going to be all demo videos. You're going to be able to see all the reviews that were posted. You can post your own review in here. Did I not click it? I didn't. Uh, right here. I click that. There you go. Why did it do that? That's really weird. Click. There we go. All right. Now it moved over. All right. So there we go. So now you'll see like, so I made a video at one point on how to play the cheetah. And this was, so this one's put on the cheetah because this has uh, oil patterns in there as well. So the reviews on bowling balls, you can post your own reviews. You can do all these different things. It's going to be cool. The oil patterns here. So you can go through and uh, say you're going to bowl a tournament on certain pattern. It's going to give you all the information on all these patterns. Um, and I will put information on PBA patterns as well on here. Uh, so that way you can go and look at them. But there's seven different page, seven pages of all these bowling balls or all these different patterns, chameleon, cheetah. Oh, they're already in there, Carmen Salvino. So they're already in there. You look and you view, view details. It'll give you the pattern sheet and show you exactly what they are. So that's pretty cool. And then reviews. People will be able to write a review, say, hey, I bowled here on this pattern, on this type of surface. You know, this is what I saw. I'm going to do my reviews on them as well. But you'll get access to this as a member of the website. So that's pretty cool. Uh, user arsenals. So like right now, the only one that's up because we just literally launched this. Max put his arsenal in here. It shows exactly what he's got in there. You know, so you can kind of compare your arsenal to other people's arsenal as well, which is pretty neat. Um, and then what else we got? Yeah, all your demo videos, the oil patterns. We saw that. All reviews is, what's that? Um, oh, okay, so like, yeah, so oil pattern. Max did reviews on certain patterns that he's bowled on uh, and put, you know, what he thought about it in there. And I'll put what I think about these patterns in there as well. You can put your input on what you did and how things worked. But the biggest thing I think is the bowling balls. I think it's kind of cool that you're going to get to see all the access to all the bowling balls and uh, be able to get into this stuff here. But anyway, if you want to become a member, go ahead and just click that sign up. And you can sign up, become a member. If you become a paid member, you're going to get access to all of these features. As a free member, you're only going to get access to one or two of these features. So you're going to want to be a paid member because then the paid member also gets to be involved in the giveaway that I'm actually about to do right now. So let's go ahead. Oh, I don't want your advertisement. Thanks, though. Appreciate you. But we're going to do the giveaway. So right now I have uh, and you get free clinics. So like right now coming up, I have a clinic tonight. That is going to be going on. It's a free Q and A. Oh, did I not reschedule it? Uh oh, I didn't. Dang it. Maybe I'm not doing it tonight. Okay. Oh well. I guess I'll do it a different day. So I'll I'll put one in there. But normally you have uh see so like these ones finalized monthly free clinic for members. You get to attend a free clinic where we do a virtual clinic online. You can talk, ask questions, do all that, learn different topics, all those things. It's pretty cool. As a member, you get these. That's pretty good. So and I think the membership's only like nine ninety nine a month. So. You get lots of benefits, plus you get a discount in your virtual lessons. So if you come over here to virtual lessons and you sign up here um, as a member, you I think you get them for like uh, $29.99 instead of the $39.99. So you get 10 bucks off. So basically, if you, you know, if you're, you're getting that 10 bucks off, you sign up as a member, you're getting paid uh, that $10 more or less for that clinic or for your uh, virtual lesson. All right, admin panel, back to here. Okay, we're going to give a giveaway. Plus, I got the blog. You get to see the blog and everything. All right, giveaways. Here we go. I have one I need to do here. The June giveaway is what we're doing right now. Um, I need to do another one. So the next giveaway we're going to do is a bowling ball of choice and a $100 bowl of fight coupon. This one right now is going to be, let's draw the winners so you guys can see. Dang it. Why did I do that? There we go. All right, so now let's draw the winners. Uh, this, this one winner is going to be the Bullify jersey. I'm going to give you a coupon that gives you a hundred dollars towards Bullify.com and you get to, um, you get to actually make a custom jersey, anything you want from Bullify.com. So here we go. We're going to spin and draw a winner. 
member number 22 is Jeremy Case. So, Jeremy, I'm going to email you. If, if you don't get an email soon, email me at bowlerxtrainingcenter at uh, gmail.com, and I will send you that code. You're going to get a free bullfight jersey, basically hundred dollars towards a jersey. So if you spend more than hundred bucks, the rest is on you. But I'm going to give you hundred bucks towards getting a jersey that you want. So um, yeah, as of right now, there's only 49 people that were eligible to win. So make sure you get in there. Your chances, so one in 49 to win hundred bucks, that's pretty good. Plus the next one, one in 49 to win a bowling ball of choice and a jersey, probably a good deal, right? So make sure to get signed up. You just sign up over here. You get in here, make your. I'll sign out, so I'll show you. You come in here um, and you just can right here. Click this red button, new and don't have an account, register here. Just fill out all your information. You'll be good to go and you'll be solid. So just keep that in mind. Remember this, folks. Let me get out of here. Um, um, ba -dum. um ba -dum, ba -dum. Let me get out of there. All right, here we go. Or we'll remove that. Sweet. So that's all I got for you today. I appreciate you all watching. Hopefully, y'all sign up for that membership so you can win a uh, win that jersey, win bowling balls, win all kinds of stuff. Get into that knowledge base. Um, help help people grow in bowling. Learn more. Get a lot more going on with bowling. I'll teach you. you get in all the free clinics every month. Um, get into paid clinics for a discount. In person clinics, you get a discount as well. So I think uh, it's like twenty bucks off or something in person discount. So uh, in person. Uh, clinics that I run. I've got one coming up in Waterford and I'm going to be running some, I'm going to be doing one in this fall in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania at Lee and Krista Sons Bowling Center. Uh, we've got some other ones that are going to be signing up here pretty soon. So I've had a few people from the Illinois area asking me to go out there. So I'm going to go and I'm going to start scheduling some of these clinics and we're going to get it done. So that's all I got for you. I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate y'all watching. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. Take care.